nine, seven, one, two, four, five, six, seven, nine, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two. Oh, you're trusting ah, jump rope. So, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't jump rope anymore. Mike's gonna have to use mine. <laughs> something that some of you guys might not have done since, uh, since you guys were in PE um, or on the playground uh, is, the, is the jump rope, which I feel is such an underutilized tool. Uh, I think for you guys out there, if you've had a coach that keeps yapping at you to, to move your feet, um, this is the tool that tells you whether you're moving your feet or not. Um, you can do as much ladder work or all kinds of other, th other things, um, but this right here is gonna get you to be much more agile uh, and, uh, and allow yourself to make those adjustment steps. And coordinating um, hands, right? I mean, isn't yeah. that tennis? Oh, I'm coordinating yeah, yeah, yeah. feet and hands. So it's like, I'm, I'm doing this, like I'm, yeah. I'm doing both, which I'm horrible at jumping <laughs> rope, which you're all about to find out. <laughs> the jump rope. Okay, now, there are all kinds of jump ropes that are out there. There are weighted jump ropes, there are speed jump ropes. These are TKO. He's got a TKO, this, I've had this for probably 10 years. Rigged it up a little bit, because it broke off, but this has been really good to me. Um, now, as you work with the size of a jump rope, it's because it's always a little bit, you know, a little bit tricky. Um, usually if you're buying one, you'll get a sense for it, and it'll tell you kind of the height. Um, but really, if I'm, if I'm standing on it, from the bottom, okay, sorry, let me, it's kind of tied up a little bit. You know, that, you know, you want a little bit of slack. I think this one is, uh, is, a, is, a, nine, is a nine foot rope, uh, and, and as you're going. Now, with jumping rope, it is gonna be, as Nate said, um, that coordination between hands and feet. Um, and one of the biggest, uh, things that I see with, kid, with people jumping. If I said just bounce up and down on your feet with no rope, boom. All day, kids will do this. But right as I say, now put the jump rope in, I mean, we go crazy. We wanna be able to have that same spring and light feel where all we need to do is get off the ground, just slightly. And once we build that, now the hand. Okay, now I always say, so you know we're going forward. So if I just were to put the hand, put it in my hand and just do this. Now, what I also notice is people's arms move a lot. So this is as fast as I can swing the rope, moving my hand a lot. Notice that it's really sloppy. We want that hand, we want to have a soft elbow, light wrist, soft elbow, soft wrist, that we can move that fast. So just doing this kind of gets that elbow set in the right spot. And that's gonna allow that rope to swing a little faster. Lots of arm motion creates a lot of inefficiencies. I know all about being inef inefficient right. with this. Here we go. I'm the John Isner of, <laughs> of, of skipping rope, like way too high. Remember his split step was yeah. notoriously too high. Gibble yep. stop came in and was like, it's way too, you're, you're, you're still in still the air high. by the time you're trying to react to yep. the ball. Yeah, that's all me right. in the jump rope. Right, what we are we doing first? Just straight up, just two foot jumps. Okay, got, I think I've got this. This is all I got. Anything after this, I freak out. So as we work different planes, now you can do lots of variations. So with the two foot, okay, now what we can do is we can jump forward and we can go back. So we want to add another plane. Again, forward okay. and then back. Okay, keep going forward and then back. It's important to realize, like, just when you have planes of motion, just right as you spin one additional plane of motion, we were just going up and down, now we threw in a linear plane. It's just another element that just adds to coordination, uh, so also different muscles that are having to activate. So now forward and back, the other directions we can go. Okay. Left and right, here we go. Got it. Ready. So we're jumping off the two feet, left and right. Just work, working a few, just a few jumps one direction, a few jumps the other direction. Don't, dude, I know we're gonna do the ollie. The ollie and, shuffle, yeah. yes sir. The ollie shuffle, both feet are gonna be hitting the ground at the same time. So we're just doing this. So if you're trying to get coordinated, use the line as a gauge. So we're gonna be doing this the whole time. Feet are gonna land at the same time. So we're gonna start with two foot jumps. 
and then staying low, just alternating those feet, okay, just from here, just to get the transition left and right. Now, you can go a little slower if you need to, but the key is making sure that you just press both feet forward and back in that reciprocal drive. And then if you speed the rope up with the hands, the, the feet gotta match as well. And I, I've had to spin, I, I still can't do it, but like, I think that's important that just feeling this like lightly, that's where I had to start. The next piece and so much of what we need is to create, um, create balance, stability, and strength with our legs independently. And the jump rope, single leg, whether it's for alternating feet with high knees or one, two, one, twos, two hops or five hops, it really is that exposure of like, how strong are you when you've got one leg to plant on, one mm -hmm. leg to jump off of? So here's a series. I'm just gonna go through alternating, two, and then five, just what you got. All right, so here. So from here, now, if we're alternating, there are a couple ways you can do it. You can think of it as just kicking your feet out Okay, so this is just nice and light. Now I can treat it as a high knee as well. Oh, your trusty ah, jump rope. So, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't jump rope anymore. Mike's gonna have to use mine. <laughs> I hate that name? I can't join you in this. Um, I'm gonna run it back, okay? It's a two foot, okay, boom. Okay, now we're gonna go high knees. Okay, now back to here, okay? Next thing is gonna be a one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, two, one, two. Now as we do this, a lot of times kids, people wanna like bring their heels up, it's super inefficient. Bring your knee up, knee back down. Just pick your leg up from your knee and your hip, whatever you do, if you pull up. And here's how I describe it, that your feet wanna move fast, so Listen to my foot if I pull from the heel and my hamstring. Energy is not driven down versus, and as we're moving on a cord, we want to be thinking up with the knees into the ground because as you drive into the ground, that is that loading and that compression to push yourself in a direction that you need and, to go. And we found this in reverse, so for me, we were jumping rope and you, Mike discovered this. He was like, you're pulling this way. And on my right leg, pretty, pretty second nature to drive this way, left leg because of the injury and probably muscle weakness and deficiencies, I wanted to do this. So, and as we go, so as I said, we, so we start here, light alternating. Okay, a little bit more explosive high knees. One, two, one, two, one, two, two, okay. You can go one, two, three, four, five. One, three, four, five. One, three, four, five. One, four, five. Now, you can run through a variety of exercises there. Now, one other thing, um, you feel almost like you're doing like an Irish jig, just across. Now, so you cross the feet. One, two, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, I'm two, three, four, five. I'm never gonna be able to do five. that. Now, a good test. This is something that you can test yourself. So. One minute on the clock, set your phone. One minute on the clock, and you're gonna set it now. So you got it, and you're gonna see how many jumps you can get in one minute. And now, and this is just a good gauge. So in three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, one, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, five, I got 10 more seconds. Five, six, eight, eight, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine
in time. Oh. Dude, that's ridiculous. Where, where are so, you at? What'd you get? Uh, Catch your breath and tell me. <laughs> the, uh, I got lost in that one. I think it was one in that 190-ish. What, what, for us mere mortals, what should we shoot for? I think... 10. I'm going to shoot for 10. You know, the, tri uh, the triple digits. Now, it could be a minute. Now, if the cardio, kind of, you lack that cardiovascular strength and that heart rate gets too elevated, shoot for 30 seconds, okay? Now, in 30 seconds, can you get 50 jumps? Can you get 50 jumps? Can you not mess up? Now, no one... Nothing better than a little bit of a little nudge. I like, I love that word. Like, what is going to nudge you to try to go faster, to try to go harder, to try to push you into another realm that's going to make you better? Now, is that the phone? Is it your friend? Hey, right. we're going. You go, I go. Yeah. But this is why the jump rope, obviously, I mean, if you're trouble, having trouble with footwork, this is where we want to start. I mentioned Federer working with the fencer earlier, and so they – this is probably 10 years ago, they got a hold of part of the workout that he was doing it and they were calling it the gainer. And so what he was doing was 30 minutes to where he would go a minute of skipping rope and then a minute of core, so like a plank. Then a minute of skipping rope and then a minute of core, so a side plank. He would just keep switching it back and up, back, back and forth. But it surprised me with it being a, a fencing being trained through a fencer, but that was everything. He was saying like the quick steps and the power of the thrust is all about the coordination of the, the, the feet mm -hmm. and the hips and whatnot, and then core stability. Because obviously you imagine fencers is they're very, very yep. up, upright. So that, that if there was one exercise as far as outside of everything we did, if I was trying to get in better tennis shape, yep. would you say the jump rope is the one piece of equipment I need? 100%, I feel as I, uh, you know, kids will work on, I talk about kids because that's who I've mainly been spending a lot of my time with, even, uh, but adults too, that you, know, you got ladder work. I mean, there are all these tools that you can use, but if you don't move your feet right, the jump rope actually will tell you. I mean, I could be trash on line work or in a ladder, yeah, the ladder might get bunched up, but this, if you don't do it right, you don't actually execute the jump rope and yeah. having that, it, you know, in tennis, it's did the ball go in or not? Having that immediate feedback of whether you did it right is really essential for getting better. But the key is that instead of, uh, you know, okay, be specific with your target. Did you hit that target or not? Yep. And then from there, make that adjustment. I'm so um, glad the other jump rope broke because you were definitely <laughs> going to make me do that. And um, it was going to be really embarrassing. <laughs> Mike, really appreciate you being here, helping right me. On. Anytime. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.